Hi, welcome to the Old Quarry Wood Shop. I've just had delivery of the Axminster 80 315SB saw table and I'm about to put it together. So let's go. This is the saw table. It's delivered on a pallet upside down, but you must remember this is a very heavy machine and you will not be able to move it on your own. I've got a couple of steps leading up to the workshop and the delivery drivers will not help lift it up those steps. Although they told me in the shop that they did do that, they had tools to, to get it up a couple of steps and that they, they would do that. But the delivery driver tells me that uh, he, he won't do it. He was on his own, he was a young kid and um, you need two good sized blokes to, to be able to step this up steps. You can't carry it up steps, you have to step it up one at a time. It is so heavy. And that is after you've taken everything out. This is how it's delivered. It, it does have these plywood panels all around it. It's, it is well packed, but and everything else is stuffed inside the machine. I've, I took everything out, took all the packaging off, took everything out and it is still very heavy, still a two man lift just. So just re remember that they will not deliver it up any steps. Um, we managed to get it up the steps into the workshop. Now what comes with it? You get, you get your, your handles, of course, everything is in bits. You've, you've just got the main table that is set up and you've got, you've got your two uh, uh, to set your angle, to set your height, um, your mitre gauge. This, this doesn't come with it. This I've had to buy separately because it, it, it comes with a 16 amp uh, plug on the end of here. Where is that? Where is that? Here. But you don't get the other end. So you have to go out and buy that. I got this from Screwfix. Around six pounds. Okay. It's not installed yet. That wire leading out of the floor. Uh, that is where I'm going to install it. So that's got to be done. So you don't, you don't get the plug with it. Then um, you've got hose clips. You've got all the spanners and Allen keys, screws, nuts and bolts. That looks like a, a hose holder and a push stick. What mo I must mention is this roll of paper here. Do not throw it out. They have um, a couple of lugs in. If you can just see there where the little lug goes, they fit into there on the handle. Okay, let me just show you. There they are. So just be careful you do not throw that away with the rubbish. your instructions which as well as the instructions you get pictures which is always good and good for colouring when you're finished You also get a hose, side panels, legs, brackets for a table, the extension table on the top. I've also gone for So 
open this. This is the cast iron extension tables. Again, these are very, very heavy. And it would be advisable to get two people to lift those. So that, that is an extra. I don't know what's in this one. It's a little bit lighter, this one. Oh, this is the uh, the bar for the um, rib fence and the rib fence itself and the one underneath I know is the uh, and the one underneath I know is the uh, extension because I've had the extra tables the um, cast iron tables then they do send along with it an extended uh, rip fence um, bar, measuring bar. Okay. So we get down to the instructions and uh, see what they say. And uh, we'll work on putting it together. So you work your way through. So it says the first thing to do is to get this and to put it into the side panel and then put the, the legs on and the brackets. Okay, so let's do those few things first. There it is, the, uh, the instructions say make sure the, uh, the smaller outlet is, is pointing upwards. Now up is, um, is towards the longer length of what's left. That's the up, okay. So I believe, yes. It's slightly different, you'll notice, to the instruction. This has a, a plate on the back and this one, they're screwing one on uh, without this plate, this back plate. So it did confuse me for a, a short while, but they, they've, uh, they must have added this for, for whatever reason. And so uh, this picture isn't quite right and it might confuse, but there is this back plate now, which you put on. That's that one. Now it's down to the legs. This is a leg. And you'll see that there are two bolt holes there. Those go on the bottom of the machine, not connected to the machine, but the other end. So that those are towards the floor. And it's only held on by this one hole in the bottom here. Okay, all the legs are bolted on. And as I said, the two, two holes for bolts, I don't know what they're for yet, uh, are on um, the end that touches the floor. The brackets are fitted 
to the opposite side to the angle adjustment and they they're just finger tight at the moment which the instructions which is what the instructions say and they're in adjusting slots so the, the whole thing does they can be adjusted so I, I suspect that when you put the the table on we can adjust it to the the top of the the sort main saw table that's where we're at so far okay let me show you where we're at the pipe is fitted to the outlet and the inlet the inlet is oval so you need to squeeze the pipe in order to get it on all the panels are on and the nuts and bolts have been tightened the bracket for the table is also on but the uh, the nuts are still fairly loose to adjust the table once we've turned it over this is where I'm up to right now and the reason there is a gap my buddy came round and helped me turn the table over it wasn't fair to put him on the screen and so uh, there was a few bits that I did the reason he came around was to wire up the plug and um, and the mains and um, I can show you that the plug has been wired the uh, it is switched off from the consumer unit and just to test there it won't start okay so it's not for the consumer unit the mains so everything is safe and uh, these are the extension tables I bought as an extra because they cast iron rather than the uh, the thinner stuff that is supplied and they're very heavy and they have to be bolted on you've got to hold them while you bolt them on uh, there is there is a way of doing it putting one bolt in while it's standing on its end and then swinging it round and uh, while he was here he held it up while I bolted in okay so that's, that's the reason I've gone that far so um, but everything up to that point is, is pretty straightforward anyway and you wouldn't if you didn't uh, have these an extra you wouldn't have to do that process anyway okay but um, moving it from upside down to upright is a heavy task so uh, yeah I needed him to help me do that but not put him in front of the camera okay um, I've got one hand wheel on now I, I need to put the other hand wheel on so let me show you how that goes the hand wheel needs to go on here the screw is inserted already so you need to take the screw out and there's a rubber washer On there which needs to come off and that was on there I think to hold this washer on and you see the key slot there these little lug things they're called keys that I showed you was wrapped in that paper has to be located 
into that slot then the wheel with the slot placed over that and then the screw over that and then simply tighten it get it the right way It's quite tight. I could loosen it a bit. It's better. This is the lock that also automatically comes into play when you try to raise it. You need to hold that down. Uh, sorry, hold it up while you raise it. Then you can push it down and it's, it's locked. Now we're putting the back extension table on. You've got the brackets, you put the brackets on earlier and the bolts are going to be located through these elongated holes. There's two on either side. The, the screws or the bolts are uh, only hand tight at this time because uh, we need to adjust it to the level of the main table. So I'll bring... That's the way around. You'll see there's a, there's a gap behind and this is for the rail for the rip fence. Now the instructions say to put this table on first but then as you see there are holes in here and uh, it's going to be more difficult to get to but if that's what the instructions say they, they've done these hundreds of times so uh, let, let's go ahead and do that. So, let me just locate okay, that one. Right, remove this plate. There are six six screws. It says five in the instruction manual, but it might be a new design, so the, there are six in there. Just take the plate off. And if your arriving knife is not fitted, because the because the instructions suggest that it's not fitted, but mine was fitted. You have to loosen these two bolts down here and then just slide it in. And now it says to adjust it and so uh, the riving knife is eight millimeters from the tip of the saw. What, what I've got, it's an, it's an eight millimeter drill and all I'm going to do is to rest that on there. Now I know that's eight millimeters 
distance between the riving knife and the saw blade and I'm just going to tighten the nuts nice and firm we don't want it coming loose and touching the blade okay so there we go just touching them just touching them okay and that's set at eight millimeters you need the foot the blade fully extended in order to do that to reach these bolts but um, common sense will tell you that anyway you've got to get them as close to the top as you can and that's it and then all we need to do is put this plate back on and that's done We're going to fit the guard over the blade, so you need the guard, the hose, the smaller hose, uh, the clip and a screwdriver. Now there are changes again on this particular one. Um, on here, it says there is a, a pre-drilled hole and a pin bolt. You'll also see there's an L-shaped cutout in the riving knife where on there there isn't and there's no pinhole bolts. Uh, I have this instead so um, this I think might be easier so that fits over it's in the it's in the slot, and it's uh, you can tighten it. It's on a spring. You pull the handle out in order to come back without moving the bolts inside, and then you can tighten it. Right. And this is to set the height. And pure. No. I don't know what that's for. That doesn't seem to be working. I don't know what that is because in the instructions they don't have one of those I don't know what that does if you know what that does please let me know okay well, I'll have a look into that one later Now we can fit the hose. Don't forget to put your clip on. How many times have I done that? Let's push it further down. seem to fit this hose ah there we go it's very tight fit to start with there we go it's on I 
I know some people do away with the guard and this hose because they do get in the way but I'm putting everything together I'm trying it out and uh, I might find it's okay so each to their own but how's that going to stay up? I have to tighten that Okay, so that's that one. The other end of this hose goes to the outlet you fitted in the first section. Go again. putting the the rip fence assembly in so one inch or 25 mil bolts into here just put them in loosely so the the nut is He's just on the back. Now I'm adding the rip fence guide. Uh, this is longer than the one you might have because I've had the two um, extra extensions. And so with that, you do get this extended guide. Now with the bolts in place and still loose, I'm going to try and thread this, if we can, onto one of the bolts. in place and uh, all we need to do is tighten the bolts. Now we have to do exactly the same with the thinner guide rail. Locate the plastic end for the guide rails, the screws, the fine adjustment knob and the rip fence. Do the 
the same for the other end. When fitting the rib fence, there's a, there's a shape on there which has to follow the contour of the shape on the rail and that needs to be hooked under first like so and then the front pushed in and that's all fitted nicely fitting the fine adjustment knob it's a case of pushing your finger underneath to get this to get that nut in there a little bit awkward but we'll go There we go, and you can position this where you want to, it's, it's usually to the right of the fence. And then just tighten up those screws underneath. Now get the end plates for here, there are two, one's a left, one's a right. and using the screws provided get the hose support and fit it in the end of the back uh, guide rail. Let's have a look. What uh, wrench do we want? Certainly not that one. I've lost my wrench. These are the wrenches that come with the, with the saw and they're not very good. As you saw that slipped off. So let's take that uh, wrench. Here we go. So if you've got some you can use, especially the ring. There we go, nice and tight. Then I suspect that will keep hose out of the way. What we still haven't done is leveled up the back table. So you can check if the main table is level. Which it isn't quite. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to we're using the spirit level but I'm not going to use the the level in it, all I'm using it for is the flat edge. So we can see whether the table is in line. And you can see by that they're not. So we need to adjust. It's got to go down because it rocks. The pivot point is here. So it suggests this is higher, so we've got to lower that. So I'll loosen the screws a touch. Not too much, you don't want to drop all the way down. We'll probably just give it a tap. Whoa, that went a bit low, didn't it? Way too low now. So really it's just 
fiddling. Could do with two people, really. One holding the table and adjust while the other one tightens the nut. Well, that seems to be working. All I'm going to do now is to degrease. It's very greasy the top, so I'm going to degrease it. I'm going to use, um, first of all, methylated spirits, which in America denatured alcohol. And then I'll uh, I'll put some wax on it. That's it. Thanks for watching.